Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today we will take a look at some new Just No H O A content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, "Oh, you don't like my white windows." So a little over 10 years, my brother bought a condo that I lived in. They were built in the 80s. The bank had sat on this place for over a year. It needed some work. We were the first people to replace the windows, three of them for a $1,000 a piece, through the only company the HOA allowed to do the work. They had white borders. Within maybe a month, we got a letter stating we had to replace the windows again because they didn't have black borders like the rest of the association. After one or two back and forths trying to explain that choosing a color wasn't even an option through the only company they allowed us to get the work done, my brother's wife, who worked for one of the largest corporate real estate firms in the next door extremely large city, asked their legal department to draft to the HOA a letter. They relented, agreeing to allow the windows to be painted black. Within a few years, a lot of people started replacing their windows. Now they all have white windows. Next one is titled HOA and the horse they rode in on, but my neighbor's pretty cool. The subdivision that I live in has been around for about 20 years. The developer put in place bylaws that expired after 15 years. The previous chairman moved out last year and let everyone know that we should probably elect a board of some sort because he wasn't going to be around to handle the bills or fix the expired bylaws. The only thing that our dues have gone to over the last 20 years has been paying the electric bill for the streetlights, the occasional plowing when it snows more than six inches, and some minor street repairs. Little to none of the bylaws have been enforced, no parking work trucks on the street, no livestock, Three of the houses have chickens and one has a pig. No fireworks. Even though we have a subdivision 4th of July party, etc. Along with that, paying the dues has never been enforced, other than a nasty gram in the mailbox reminding people to pay in February after they were due at the beginning of the year. I decided to attend the most recent HOA meeting this past weekend, after we got a letter in the mail stating that a third-party company was going to be placing a lien on our house for past due HOA fees. Mind you I have paid every year for the six years we have been living there. As it turns out, the previous chairman kept an Excel spreadsheet of dues paid, and there are about 10 houses that have never paid a dime, and to the point where this involves me, the first 12 years that my house was around, the dues were unpaid, and the owners previous to me and myself had kept up as expected. So the current board that was put in place is outsourcing the process of collecting the dues, with a company that is placing liens on houses that are not completely paid to date, even if the current homeowner has met every payment, and being charged a pretty hefty commission for the process, so that we can repair the street again after the last repairs lasted less than a year. Finally to the point, my neighbor is retired with not much better to do, and was an HOA chairman at his previous house. At our meeting over the weekend he moved to have our current board removed and offered himself up as the replacement along with his knowledge on how to fix this situation. In the two days since he commandeered our HOA board, he contacted the county we live in, they are taking over maintenance for our street, including snow removal, repairs, and bug spraying in the summer at no cost. Got the subdivision on one trash company contract so that we no longer have five different companies picking up every day of the week, along with a consolidated bill paid by HOA dues instead of personal payments to our trash company of choice. This last one being the best part, because we're not paying for the repairs as a subdivision, we don't need any of the past due fees, or the contract with the third party company to collect them, and our dues dropped from $250 a year to $125 a year based on the average electric usage from the lamps, and the trash recycling pickup fees. Next one is titled, Continuous Damage. Not a homeowner but work for a company that manages them. Apparently, in southern states that is not mine, trees are valuable. Okay, sure, I get it. However, one homeowner claims that two trees and their roots in her front yard, 
Each lot has two trees, are growing into her plumbing pipes and breaking them. She has spent like thousands of dollars fixing her foundation alone. I acquired the association during the process. Both of us came to an agreement that she could remove the trees and just plant them somewhere else. They would still be in the front yard but just not on some water lines. I let the association know. It was reasonable and I had been through this with dozens of associations before. Your property is more important than some aesthetics. The association straight up told me no. She can remove one tree but she has to pay to replant, that's actually really typical, but she will not remove the other one. I tried to explain this woman cannot keep fixing her pipes but they straight told me that moving into the place meant she accepted the plumbing issues. That is not disclosed anywhere in any resale certificate or documents. I never heard of such a demand. I had to call her back and tell her what the association said. She's definitely gonna sue and it baffles me that there's no reason for it. There's bad HOAs and then there's some with no common sense. Next one is titled, HOA loves making it hard as possible to attend meetings. Three years ago, the HOA board redid half the units, patching and painting them. They took almost all the money out of our reserves for it since it was such an emergency. Just a coincidence I suppose that one of the board members owns a number of those properties and also owns the construction business that always happens to be the winning bid on those kinds of projects. We had multiple meetings that instead of being at the VA bar down the street were suddenly in the next town over to discuss the need to still pay off the rest of the bill at $500 a unit and raise the fees. Here we are three years later and they swore at the beginning of the year, we were going to get our units patched and painted. Covid happened and the meeting stopped. I get it, I do. But they finally sent out a notice for a Zoom meeting to be held today from 11 am to 12 pm to discuss a $2,500 per unit special assessment they want to do along with bylaws rewrite. Multiple issues with this. 1. Most of those that even bother to attend the meetings are 60 or older and I wonder how many have computers, smartphones and would even know how to attend an online meeting. 2. Apparently we had to pre-register days before and get approval, which I was unaware of when I tried to join 10 minutes before the start time. Reviewed the letter the board had sent and nothing states that. 3. Our old meetings were held at 7 pm. Most of us work from 11 to noon on Tuesdays so the new meeting time seems as if it wants to weed out those that aren't retired. 4. When you do register, apparently you have to find their calendar tab and click on the link to attend through there, also not mentioned on the letter. 5. My neighbor was having trouble as well and by the time she was able to find the link through the calendar, something she and I had to both call the property manager about, the meeting had been locked and she was simply told, well, it started at 11. I really hope they don't meet quorum. I want to be able to attend the next meeting and now let them worm their way out of answering some questions. One of my biggest does, if it was such an emergency that you had to drain our reserves to do your set of units, why were ours okay to sit for three more years? Because as of right now, we have holes and exterior damage on most of them. Duck HOS, not dealing with this at our next place. If we hadn't just put in AC, I'd want to be gone as soon as possible but we'll have to put up with this for a few more years. Next one is titled, HOA is refusing to fill out or even verify a mortgage company's condo questionnaire for a buyer of my property. Background. I sold my condo and the buyer has been using Rocket Mortgage, ERM, to get their loan. Everything has gone great with the sale, except a roadblock the mayor of our little HOA city has put up. ERM is requiring a condo questionnaire to be signed by someone on the board before they will give final approval for the loan. It's a simple document, but the HOA will not fill out the document and return it. ERM even has paid $75 to the HOA to do so, but they are still refusing. To my knowledge, they cashed the money too. Two months ago, I too paid $75 to our HOA for seller's documents that is a state requirement. The HOA is claiming that they did the required paperwork and will not be doing anything else for this sale. So, I took it upon myself to fill out the questionnaire using public records and general knowledge about the development. 
I sent it to Erm, and they asked to get someone from the HOA to verify the information and sign it. Well the ductwits are refusing to do that as well. To make matters even more ducked, I was just notified from my realtor that the original contract will expire before we can close now. Erm needs at least three business days to approve once they receive the document. I even highlighted where I got all the information, included budget documents and the master deed, but Erm will still not accept without a signature. I'm extremely frustrated and exhausted with both the HOA and Erm at this point. The buyer is at risk of losing the loan and we are at risk of losing them. I'm almost to the point where I feel like I might need to contact a lawyer to see what kind of legal options I have. The worst part is we've already purchased a new home. Now here we are stuck paying for two mortgages, utilities etc until the condo sells. Basically scraping by until I can get the condo sold. Ah, uh, ducking a holes. Next one is titled, The Shabbat Story. So I had someone in my last post ask me to clarify on the Shabbat story, wherein our former HOA president almost got the cops called on her for disrupting an interfaith Shabbat we helped host at our house. My husband and I aren't Jewish, but we both highly support inter-religious dialogues and peaceful, non-confrontational situations where people of different faiths come together. So when my friend was having her house sprayed when she had her monthly interfaith Shabbat, we offered to have it at our place. She had to downsize the guest list, since we have a smaller house, but it seemed like it was going to go well. We knew most of the people who would be attending, and knew that, at worst, a few awkward questions might be asked about faiths. We put all our patio furniture out in the yard, cleaned off the grill, and everything looked like it was going to go great. Everyone in the complex, including us, have done this before and have never been bothered. Important detail. A part of respecting each other, we all left our phones inside the house. This is pertinent to the story. But since we don't have fences, XHOA. President was walking by and got curious. Not knowing that she is the worst, my friend explained to her that it was a Shabbat and that we were all discussing our different religions and asking questions. Q stink face and the actual words that came out of her mouth. In the year 2018. You people killed Jesus. My friend blinked. Everybody blinked. I sank into my chair in abject horror and my husband looked like his soul departed his body. It wasn't my fault, but it was still horrifically embarrassing. Excuse me? My friend asked, far more politely than I would have been able to do. From this point on I will paraphrase. You heard me. You people killed the Lord. I'm sorry you feel that way. I can't wait till all of y'all to either die off or go to Israel so the Lord will come back and cleanse the world. HOA president then looked at me with equal hatred in her eyes and said, again paraphrasing as this was a while ago. I always knew there was something more wrong with you. Friend. She's not Jewish, she was just nice enough to let us use her house. HOA president then huffed, spat right at my friend's feet, and threatened to call the cops before walking off. I'm not entirely sure what she thought the cops were going to do, but she threatened us. We regret not having phones to record the encounter. Now all that would be bad enough. If the story ended there, it'd be bad enough. But it doesn't. The next morning, when we woke up to go out for the day, there was a pound of unwrapped, uncooked bacon on our front porch. By that point it was covered in flies and just generally super gross. What a waste. This was the incident that made us decide to buy a security camera. Without any evidence, we stupidly decided against calling the cops. We know better now. I realize it was very stupid now not to call the cops, so please do not come at me aggressively telling me so. I have a lot of regrets about it. Last one is titled, Sometimes, You Just Have to Laugh. For background, we live in a condo complex where the HOA is run by some company on the other side of the county that is so disconnected and useless I don't understand what they do with our monthly fees. We got a new front door. The front door we purchased was white. All the front doors, per HOA's desire for a welcoming and consistent look, must be blue. But it's a specific shade of blue. 
so specific they don't give the name of the color out easily and it's only available from one obscure paint supply store. So we emailed HOA to get the paint color. A week passes, and we email again. A month passes, and we email again. We finally send a, do you not want a, welcoming and consistent look, email, and after six weeks, we get the paint code emailed to us. We pick it up from the shop the same day, and paint the door the next morning. The afternoon after we paint, we get a notice of violation in the mail that we had an unpainted door that did not measure up to the welcoming and consistent look. Now I don't know if these guys are stupid, a holes, or a bit of both, but it made me laugh. Thanks for listening.